welcome to ceres 3 skill development sessions i take this opportunity to share the knowledge on basics of fatigue and its importance in industry today's topic is based on the past experience in the engineering industry and how this fatigue is helpful in engineering analysis and design so before starting the talk just to address what is the overview of industry and in this talk in another 40 45 minutes the topics that are going to cover are mechanical failure aspects introduction to fatigue types of fatigue fatigue design process fatig life prediction approaches stress life approach how stress life approach is useful in predicting the life of a component some of the examples effect of stress concentration and practical examples factors that affect the fatig and finally how Ceres 3 approach is helpful in designing the components against fatigue. Overview of engineering industry. Some of the challenges in engineering industry to get the first time to get the first time right. global warming and carbon footprint more complexity in work and face of the industry new procedures materials and regulations that are updating time to time that are getting updated time to time more expectation from the client and industry many component failures in service for example aircraft automotive and mechanical civil engineering components before its actual life ends then what approach to follow to solve engineering industry challenges one should know the product design process manufacturing aspects know how and why starting from how to do and why we are doing to get a complete understanding of the product life cycle and to get the first time right one should have skills processes and right approach skill base to do that embed the fast experience into industry in the industry and develop future trends of technology in product design and manufacturing modern is modern era is with full of computers uses of the computers to maximum extent to exploit the technology and the same can be used to benefit of the industry study the component failure industry analyze the root cause and master the skills one of the such skills needed in industry to get 
better products is fatigue analysis and design the skill is essential before going to the engineering discussion actual real human body itself undergoes fatigue loading by going up and down loading and if we do continuously work or run muscles get get fatigue of course the running is useful for health but at the same time body is subjected to fatigue loading similar analogy can be applied to engineering components if you apply a repeated cyclic loading variation in the loading component is subjected to fatigue and finally its life comes down as compared to acting independent static load continuously then what is mechanical failure mechanical failure in general various failure mechanisms may be classified into two types based on the deformation and fracture excessive elastic deformation unstable elastic deformation plastic deformation fracture stress resu- stress corrosion cracking these are all some of the various types of failures as per the diagram before a component undergoes fracture it should undergo deformation the deformation is experienced when a component subject to the loading and type of loading and it undergoes a different temperature loading apart from the material properties this component any component undergoes deformation and before it goes to the fracture it undergoes elastic and plastic deformation if the study a little bit deep into this microstructure and how the failure and fracture each material in the world is some or other form is having a defect no material is 100% perfect that is the nature of the materials this voids dislocations that existing in the component when it comes to get shaped into a particular a typical component these voids are also getting transferred into the component when the component is get loaded all these voids get pushed to a particular location where it forms a covalence a chain of voids so where it can it acts as a weak link in the material section as the load application goes up and up this is unable to take the load and finally fracture occurs this is applicable in case of a static or fatigue loading you can see this is the how final fracture occurs this forms a chain of voids then this is the mechanism of uh, simple static failure and to see what are all kind of the failures and uh, typical engineering application just to give a brief in mechanical engineering gear is one of the typical component used extensively in industry in case of a gear where there is a failure in the root because of the bending there is a flank failure there is a surface fitting because of rubbing against the two teeth and 
gear tooth failure because of the shear and there are different kind of loads experienced at the gear bore other practical example is a spider arm which is useful in the load transmission at a different limbs a failure can happen at the root of the spider provided it undergoes a lot of loading at the end of the spider if the load is applied at this zone it gives a maximum moment and finally failure happens here the same has been showed here if it is a static failure or a fatigue failure a similar trend follows another simple engineering component or like a daily uses component is a vapor clip this vapor clip fail at a very low stress level if it gets a repeated positive and negative loading that is up upside upside bending and downside bending it fails within no time if that same clip is applied applied using the binding the paper in the simple in the folded form it can last for many years so that is the difference between static loading and uh, fatigue loading another typical aircraft failure where heavy industry this fatigue is is very much uh, important factor to be considered in the design of the component whether it is a helicopter or aircraft or it is a ship or it is a submarine or automotive this fatigue plays a very important role in the component design so several companies or organizations are working extensively on fatigue development methods to establish to increase the fatigue life for the purpose of industry another failure where it's related to fatigue as well as stress concentration it is like a, a typical chassis failure where it can experiences a different kind of loading the failure can happen at the cutout region where it is a sharp corner it is a stress riser and this crack initiates and propagates and finally this component will break so this is one of the reference taken from the doctorate research on fatigue loading and where who the stress concentration is having influence on the fatigue life then introduction to fatigue so fatigue is a process of within a change is which, which damage is accumulated in a material undergoing fluctuating loading finally resulting in the failure even the maximum load is well below the elastic limit of the material being considered so fatigue is one of the responsible and main element in the in the mechanical industry over 90% of failures happening or because of the fatigue in more or less other form then what are all the stages of fatigue one is crack initiation crack propagation and fracture see this this fatigue is mainly deals with up to crack initiation the fatigue life after crack initiation propagation and fractures is dealt by damage tolerance aspect of the subject so at this talk is mainly uh, fatigue basics of fatigue so it can speaks about up to crack initiation however this damage tolerance can be an extension of fatigue study as discussed uh, there is uh, a many wides 
in the material and there is a big because of this uh, variation the formation up and down loading there is extrusions and intrusions formed on the surface this forms a irregular surface on the on the surface that acts as a crack starting point because of this slip planes once the crack starts it can propagate based upon depending upon the loading direction and finally it gets into pieces when it gets fracture as after crack propagates to critical crack length in the microscopic level this is the crack initiation this is a crack propagation where is a smooth surface finally crack fracture is a component fracture where it is a rough surface by the time it comes material is is not capable of taking load finally it goes into crack mode after critical crack length so mechanism of fatigue from the atom level to microscopic and macroscopic level where dislocation the slip formation and finally critical crack length finally fracture then what are these fatigue failure characteristics this fatigue failure can happen due to repeated fatigue load at uh, these happen at stress well below the uh, static failure stress levels local yielding occurs during fatigue loading of course that creates two types of approach one is stress based one is strain based in this talk stress based approach is being discussed this as already shown in the previous slides so this is having a starting point this is like a smooth striations or like a beach marks and then finally rough surface is the crack zone similarly a, a fatigue we have it has been discussed how fatigue is there finally what are the types of fatigue one is mechanical fatigue one is thermal fatigue one is acoustic fatigue and corrosion fatigue and fretting fatigue these are all different types of fatigue where each type of fatigue contributes the fatigue failure if these two if these loads acting simultaneously then fatigue life is very much less rather than acting independently on the component in the fatigue design process in a broader terms first stress on by considering the material geometry loading perform the analysis static analysis to get the what exactly the static reference stress from there using the fatigue machine and perform the fatigue analysis with a different approaches so many companies follows uh, established procedures in the fatigue design and finally once it is approaches the design service goal it can be taken into next stages of analysis like damage tolerance if it doesn't meet the criteria the cycle repeats further so some of the basic terminologies of fatigue cycle to maximum stress minimum stress alternating stress stress ratio load ratio so stress range that is if you have a maximum stress sigma max minimum stress is sigma min then these terminologies can be defined stress ratio is equal to minimum stress by maximum stress alternating stress is equal to sigma max minus sigma min to perform the fatigue analysis one of the essential element is stress cycles that is called sn curve which is the basis for estimating the fatigue life of the component 
x axis represent logarithmic life in cycles y axis represent stress so these sn curves always derived from test data of a specimen with log mean of the levels at each stress level this has been tested on over various specimens of a particular specimen of a particular material so with a different number of tests finally a mean stress curve has been derived that represents the that material that kind of specimen with uh, of course with the stress concentration factor and all fit taken into account based on the whether it is a specimen is a regular or irregular this factors will be applied so based on the uh, sn curve data a suitable mathematical form has been developed that will based on the exponent co coefficients uh, that will give the slope of the, the curve there are as discussed mean parameters maximum stress mean stress by 2 load ratio sigma min by sigma max these parameters are useful in predicting the fatigue life so this load ratio if it is a zero it is almost like a start stop type loading if it is a minus one it is completely reversible loading where maximum stress equal to minimum stress but with a different sign with minimum st mean stress is equal to zero so this is a typical stress cycle where this is sigma max sigma min and this is a time so this is represents one cycle if it is a regular or irregular this is the random cycle then how to estimate this fatigue life prediction so one is the stress life approach where we can call this as a high cycle high cycle fatigue this is formulated in the 1850s century other one is the strain life where here uh, strain is uh, more or otherwise the stress is beyond elastic limit it has a catic fatigue crack propagation this is like a damage tolerance approach so in this talk stress life approach is discussed as discussed the stress life approach stress versus number of cycles to failure stress can be sigma a sigma max or sigma min logarithmic scale is used for number of cycles representation stress values used are normally nominal stress there is no adjustment for stress concentration sn curve is based on repeated reverse stress cycles that is called sigma min is equal to mean is equal to zero or stress ratio is equal to minus one as it is i cycle fitting if the number of cycles if it is greater than 10 for 5 in the real engineering then that kind of uh, uh, components comes under i cycle fitting zone there are two types one is definite and indefinite stress and curve generalizing the fatigue data how because the sn curve represents a specific uh, uh, type of uh, curve fit that has uh, been derived after extensive tests so but how we can generalize the same sn curve to be used for a different applications one is to use constant amplitude endurance curves to be used for complex load histories so even though it is there is a complex load history but sn curve whatever it has been used is with constant amplitude endurance level so we need to map that complex loading to this uh, uh, endurance constant amplitude endurance there can be certain procedure so that we can generalize that to allow endurance curves obtained from smooth specimen to be applied for different shapes of component so this has been discussed as sn curve is generated on a specific like uh, dimensions and specific nature of specimen but in general always there is no guarantee that 
we can get exactly the same specimen as being used in the pate. So there can be some approximation and generalization has to be made while taking the final endurance strength. To allow endurance score obtained by testing one material, how this can be used for other material. So this is also can be done by using the some kind of um, uh, like factors to be taken into account. In case of a loading, if it is a multi-axial loading, how it can be figured into uni-axial loading, what kind of uh, the correction factors to be used, all these to be taken into account before um, using the final endurance values. Analysis of the complex loading. As discussed, this loading in general, it won't be simple. There is a complex loading where there is a variation of loading at a very um, uh, course of the uh, like operation. So this loading, how we can take into account to get the actual life of the component. So that how we can do is by if at all if the single component or a single loading of a particular nature is acting throughout life, then we can get a certain number of cycles. Like different kind of loading can happen separately on the component. We can get a, there is a different life for that component at that stress level. But in the real scenario, always this won't happen only this loading p1 only exists in its entire life this loading p1 can exist certain number of cycles afterwards the load can go up or down that will go for certain number of cycles this will keep con this is this keeps continuous until that mission is over during the fatigue mission or applied uh, during operation, the entire loading can happen in the form of a blocks. So now with this uh, loading scenario, how we can address whether a component is safe or how, how long it can survive. So the first thing is if the loading consists of only large amplitude PA1 or P1, the failure of component will occur when the number of cycles of this small N1 equals to cycles of the fracture capital N1. So then it will it will fail if it is independently acting. Similarly, for a different loading cycle, this can also create a different life. But if these are all acting simultaneously together then you get a new life that is the actual real life of the component this is like a small n1 small capital n1 small n2 because of this loading that many number of cycles of load acting but if this load only acts this many number of cycles it will survive so finally all this add together you should get one that is the damage if this damage is less than one that one by the damage will give life of that component in other words if we are using this loading or if we are using that number of cycles loading both will give the same effect with the effect to equivalent alternating stress can be applied on the component that in the endurance curves to, to cater for a different shape. As all know, the stress SN curves are produced at a particular type of a specimen, but if that uh, specimen, like nature or type section, and all changes, how we can take into account that endurance curve into actual scenario. So this can be done by using this uh, stress concentration factor into account based on the nominal stress how exactly this notch stress against factor is that can be multiplied with or can be taken with the actual reference stress then we can get the actual high peak stress 
that fixtures will be used in the analysis purpose for example on the stress life approach I estimate the fatigue loss of a flange at the, on the cutout region with a given far field condition with the stress concentration is a 2.2 as there is a cutout there is a material data how to predict how many number of cycles it can survive so based on the three scenarios the maximum stress is for a particular case is 114 other one is zero so here is stress ratio is equal to zero that means minimum stress by maximum stress but this loading happened in its entire life only five cycles and there is another kind of loading where with 81 the ksi and is uh, 58 is the minimum and this happened around eight cycles its lifetime other minimum load it is uh, 72 peak and 56 is uh, low with that this component has experienced 15 number of cycles now with this combined loading how to address the equal or final life of the component so with this when there is a stress stress is equal to zero it means this car when we have this 114 ksi with this with this car we can get the what is the number of cycles that is 95000 but actual cycle it has undergone is 5 5 by 90000 95000 it will give the damage of this loading on this component similarly there are other two scenarios where with this much stress and this minimum stress and this many number of cycles so take that much stress and take that loading and get the final number of cycles with the corresponding stress ratio so similarly third case so by adding all these uh, damages we can get a particular damage that damage will give this many number of cycles so in other words if this component this component experience this cycle this cycle this cycle instead of doing that apply only this many number of cycles with equivalent like alternating stress then component will also will fail with that loading that is the concept of the stress life approach then another simple way we know now how to predict life based on the stress of oh, that is called uh, i cycle fatigue now there are other talks like uh, strain life approach and damage tolerance uh, study that is not covered in this uh, session however it can be for further queries and uh, discussions stress three can be approached with that given miles so now what are all the precautions to be taken how to improve the fatigue life so one is to reduce the sharp edges sharp corners and second thing is use of fatigue strength enhancement process like short peening cold working applying interference fit so large villa should be provided cutouts in the presence pressurized skins where the high peak stress is there in the surrounding region there should not be any satellite holes so that will create a superimposition of stress concentration that will be showed in the coming slides and the position of rivet and bolt holes must be controlled on the flanges to avoid the large concentration due to sufficient edge distance or for spot pacing so stress concentration factor as one of the uh, main factor so that uh, keeps uh, picking up the stress levels stress concentration arises from the abrupt change in the geometry of uh, pot under load so if you see in this uh, a plate with cut out as we can apply the load here at that where is the red dot there it, it experiences a maximum stress that is in a simple term if you apply sigma 
here more or less you will get the three times that sigma so that is the intensity of the load so the why that much stress will come at the zone because when in the analogy portion when we take a rubber sponge mark the lines like horizontal strips when i apply a pinch at the stop at that one end see representing the cut out or a notch then you can see around the notch there is a compression or a, a dense flow of these lines that represents there is a peak stress in this zone similar analogy will be applied for the component under the loading so this is where to explain little bit further how stress contour changes its lines how sharp corner how it is a sharp corner how it can change the direction in the in the photo elastic uh, representation you can see that how peak stresses will flow the contours and this represents a strain gauge to capture the what's happening at the cutout zone as away from the cutout there is a decrease in the stress field so if there is a one cutout we, it has it is evident that there is a increase in the stress but if there is a neighbor cutout how this will influence so because of this two cutouts there is a increase in the stress concentration because of only one uh, plate with a hole is concerned there is a peak stress here there is another uh, hole is concerned there is another peak stress here when we apply this uh, uh, when we apply this uh, uh, this uh, loading due to this combined uh, effect that interaction there is always there is a increase in the stress concentration it can be seen in the further in engineering uh, applicant or a component so where this large cutout is having because of the loading it is having stress concentration because of the small hole at this high region it is also having influence on the stress concentration it, it, it peaks of further stress concentration so when there is a high stress concentration the satellite hole must not be located here it can be somewhere other zone so due to interacting stress concentration it has been discussed earlier so this is a large cutout and there is a rivet hole because of this it is interference between the influence of one cutout another cutout there is a crack formation in this zone so similarly these images are being taken from internet so similarly there is a cutout and there is a crack formation because of this influence of this stress concentration at the same time here insufficient uh, like radius on the cutouts if you take a the simple analogy taking the like a plain specimen without cutout specimen with circular cutout specimen with square cutout specimen with a triangular slit so the purpose of addressing this is if there is a discontinuity in the material how that a discontinuity can change the stress pattern because of there is a variation or a flow uh, pattern of this loading lines around the discontinuity that will influence on the stress picking up similarly in case of other irregular shaped cutout like a triangular sheet or a rectangular cutout triangular square cutout definitely it is having further more severe effect than this circular hole because there is a drastic uh, change in the flow pattern that's the reason in the most of the industries a cutout with the square is not preferred over the cutout with the circle or cross section circular nature because of this peaking of stress concentration on the irregular shapes so when the stress flow on the around the cutout when it comes away from the cutout definitely there is a sharp gradient in the stress field that will have uh, 
stress predictions around across and away from the cutout this will give further decisions on the how to take into account of the safety of that component without failure based on this test field to what extent we can lower them so so far it has been discussed how fatigue life how to estimate how to prevent uh, like how to improve fatigue life and what is the basic of fatigue analysis what is high cycle fatigue and what is low cycle fatigue and uh, now on what basis this uh, fatigue analysis is based on because of this uh, complex loading or uh, loading missions different kind of missions is taken into account in case of aircraft it is a long longitudinal or a short or it is like a tactical or if there is a mix of all this uh, long range short range medium range all this uh, has been taken into account in the uh, designing and certification uh, stages but in case of uh, other components engineering industry like automotive so where their distance travel on the road is one of the parameter at the same time what kind of acceleration it is uh, producing or uh, getting that also will have influence on the this uh, mission or loading uh, mission so based on this it has been uh, this can be addressed to get the fatigue life once we do the fatigue mission analysis in the fatigue mission analysis there is a complex loading where this loading cycle is not constant there is always there is change in the magnitude at the same time how uh, it can be um, like a move away from the uh, actual uh, like a uniform uh, cyclic loading so what kind of peaks are there what kind of troughs are there what is maximum range what is the stress ratio on each cycle so based on this these uh, it can be uh, grouped into similar zones or similar blocks so that will be used as for the fatigue analysis for a particular block what is the maximum stress minimum stress so how many number of cycles how many number of uh, times it has occurred that will form like one block similarly there will be many blocks has been uh, it will be formed so with this there are approaches like rain flow counting reservoir counting so with that uh, it can be estimated what is the actual uh, loading uh, pattern of from irregular to regular so with that fatigue analysis uh, will be performed so this is the in a nutshell what about the fatigue uh, uh, like a basics and uh, some of the approach now how what kind of factors it affects the fatigue life there are many factors that affects fatigue life first thing it is like stress concentration and is uh, like a mean mean stress and um, like corrosive environment uh, temperature and it is like the shape of the uh, holes like it is the interference fit or a closed fit or uh, what kind of uh, a different uh, nature of loading or it is a biaxial or single axial loading residual stresses frequency the size of the specimen and like there are many other factors uh, uh, will cup, come upon to take the final uh, effect on the uh, fatigue uh, uh, loading so effect of mean stress so when a mean stress is uh, uh, acting uh, there is a doubt that whether it will increase the life or it decrease the life it depends upon the kind of uh, uh, like a situation in case of a fatigue uh, with a different kind of mean stresses definitely positive mean stress uh, will definitely reduce the life whereas a negative mean stress will improve the life it can see it can be seen in the uh, like a diagram how uh, this tensile loading and here compressive loading will change the life in case of a tensile loading for to get the this many number of cycles we need only small amount of alternating stress because there is a um, good amount of mean stress acting but in case of here to get the 
this many number of cycles or same number of cycles we need a, a, sim a different kind of uh, means test with uh, different mean alternating stress with the different alternating stress so as, as it goes up and up in case of a compressed zone you need a maximum stress to get the uh, particular number of cycles so that's why compressed loading is beneficial for fatigue and tensile loading is not beneficial for fatigue but however in the industry tensile loading is common we should live with that but at the same time precautions uh, will be taken to improve the fatigue life so to do the means to correction factor there are different approaches one is uh, uh, like uh, Goodman approach this is uh, one of the uh, famous equation so in the real life scenario uh, there are a different kind of uh, alternating stress and mean stress acting on the component once the component is the material is known this ultimate strength is known there is no doubt but with this alternative stress and mean stress but we can't directly go to pure SN car to get the life to get the life from the pure SN car so we need to get an equivalent alternating stress that will directly will get the same life with mean stress is equal to zero as similar to this much alternating stress this much mean stress acting on the component so that's the reason this equivalent alternate stress is a, a key player to get the actual life of the component from the SN car. Similarly, other approach. So this comes to uh, conclusion of the fatigue session. But before going to the end of the session, just how this fatigue uh, design and analysis will be done using Serres 3 approach. In a nutshell, it is responsible for everybody in the industry to develop cost effective and quality and right solutions for industry as well as for individual sake. To do that, essentially, there are three essential parameters are required. Skills, rational thoughts driven processes, and relevant resources. So with this approach of the skills by skilled engineers, with the process, using the right relevant optimum resources it is definite to get cost effective solutions for industry so hence Serres 3 approach is one of the suitable approach to get the first time right if you apply the all these uh, parameters properly So with high skilled resources with the relevant skills like in this case fatigue design and analysis by application of right process based on rational thoughts and uh, using the relevant right resources like optimum time tools material and others uh, and many but in case of uh, skills and skilled engineers are going hand in hand so skills is uh, skilled engineers will engineers will become with high skill provided that the skills are mastered at the same time industry requirements and challenges definitely uh, teams or individual or like organization can aim to get first time right the series 3 approach enhances uh, 
the chances and profitable that is the probability of the getting the first time right in any industry provided the skills and processes and relevant resources are applied like properly on the industry challenges definitely will get the uh, aim to get or will definitely uh, chances you will get the first time right in any industry in this talk the fatigue is our main uh, agenda or a topic of the discussion so with this uh, skills and uh, fatigue design process with uh, right skill resources definitely application of all these things on the challenges of the requirement industry requirement or customer requirement we will get the solutions as per the uh, right quality solutions this is obviously it will go towards the first time right there is always towards in improvement towards uh, first time right it will be achieved through seriously solutions that applying rational thoughts rational analytical thoughts skills and relevant to the industry this flow chart has been taken from seriously concept from www.seriously.com thank you to get more discussion on skills on solutions or approach seriously e technologies contact at seriously.com seriously e technologies at gmail.com